Hello, Simon's Universe of Music. So here we are yet again with another interview. Here I am with my very good friend, Callum Ingram. Callum, it's nice to see you. Hey, uh, man, what's going on? It's so good to be here. I'm so yeah, happy. And it's really great to see you as well. So cool. The first thing I'm going to ask you is so from the age of nine and with the cello being your instrument, how did you feel about the sound of when you first heard that? Oh, wow. I remember it really clearly, actually. It was like, uh, you know, I've been wanting to play the cello for so long. You know, I don't know really where it kind of came from. I just asked my mom over and over and over and over again. And I must have seen it in like a coloring book or something or on TV. But I remember when the teacher came out and asked, like, oh, what would you all like to play? Is there any instruments that are it's kind of like tickling your fancy and and i was just you know i said put my hands off the cello the cello the cello and i had to ask for a long time you know before i actually came about but then when i was able to you know my parents brought me into the shop the, the girl in the store gave me my first cello and i i did a big like ah, sound and i was like right cool that's the coolest sound ever and then i want to do this for the rest of my life you know from that moment it was really amazing yeah that you know that is pretty uh pretty amazing Right. Yeah. Because, like, so many people out there, they either want to play a guitar or drums. To have that something different, right, and go, like, I'm going to play this, but not only am I going to play this, I want to be the best at playing this and, you know, make a living out of this. That's pretty sensational. Yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty, like, I don't know, it just felt so, like, natural to me, you know? It just felt like this was kind of my calling in a way I know that sounds cheesy but it really did feel like that you know and I remember it very so clearly you know it's very cool yeah it that it, it's brilliant you know in the James Bond film where uh obviously <laughs> she's got the cello that was so cool man when you see it racing yeah, down yeah. The, the snowy mountain <laughs> yeah that was so awesome it is just brilliant and I think when you think of cello it's like I always think of like that you know that film with Bond and I love Bond Oh, so, man. who doesn't love Bond, man? Oh, I will yeah. say though, I'm a big like when it comes to that kind of stuff. I'm kind of I'm a big comedy buff, so I'm a big Austin Powers fan as well. You know? <laughs> mate, you can only imagine how much I love Austin. I think he, Ooh. mate. Yeah. I think Mike Myers as a whole, as an actor, uh, I I can honestly say I, I probably idolise the guy. You know, he yeah. is so intelligent and. Hey, maybe we're in the golden era where, you know, we're lucky enough to have an actor as good as him, you know, yeah. give us uh, incredible films like uh, Austin and Wayne's World. One of my favourite films. I love Wayne's World, man. Just that, yeah. that scene when Garth gets on the drums and he does that amazing solo. I oh, like no. to play. Oh, no. Killer, man. Is there any other musical instruments that you want to learn to play? Ah. Uh. I mean, yeah, I mean, of course, I mean, I, I'm trying to think what other ones did you do, maybe, you know, <laughs> that'd be cool. I mean, I, I play, I, I play bass, I, I did play as well as cello, I play bass, I play guitar, and I play, I play all that on the, on, on the recordings as well, you know, so that, nice. that's, that's, that's all me, so that's, I will, you know, apart from drums, you know, like, I, I, but like, uh, yeah, drums, I, I think drums, I mean, you know, I've got, um, I've got a kit I, I do some stuff on every so often. I think it's quite good. I, I, you know, that's a good point, actually. I think it's good for musicians if you have access to kit, even if you don't really know what you're doing, just go in and play and practice because, like, it helps with your time, actually, you know? It just expands your horizons to do all kinds of stuff, you know? Yeah, absolutely. A while back, when me and Susanna went to see her family in the Czech Republic, uh cousin cool. gave us a harmonica man i feel there's part of me that really has to learn to play this oh well and that's kind of like how i felt you know it's like oh yeah wow, it's cool yeah but i think it's an amazing instrument well harmonicas are incredible and you can get all kinds of ones that like you can like you know, slide the thing out and get chromatic stuff you can do it you're so much you can do like stevie wonder man Absolutely. Him playing, oh my god. Ozzy. Ozzy. Amazing. Even Ozzy carries one round of him. Really? Yeah. He loves it. I never it. knew that. Uh, uh, Roger Daltrey, you know, there's 
it's just po- it's a, pocket size, you know. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Great take it, pocket. take it out with you. Do, 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 do. Amazing, wow. man. That's crazy. Like I ha- I, that, yeah. That that's so good that, that you feel that way, man. That's really cool. You should do it. Why not? Go. Cool. This sounds a bit. This sounds a bit crazy. But I've been taking nah, it. more the crazy, the better, man. I've been taking it out and giving it a bit of a blow. <laughs> 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 hey, nothing wrong with that, man. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh my god! <laughs> it is a great instrument. It has a great sound. So. Yeah, it really is. It's incredible. I mean, I think I've got a couple kicking around actually somewhere. But uh, yeah, they're 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 very cool, man. You know. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, I guess the goal the goal is to learn as as many instruments as I can. You know, it's like. I mean, someone like, I don't know if you follow like Jacob Collier or someone like that. It's just so incredible. It can do anything, man, you know? When, when, uh, when you got your cello, uh, how long did it take before you started learning your chords and your sound? Yes. So like, you know, of course, when you start playing your cello or violin in school, you, you, you get, you know, taught all the classical music and all the kind of, you know, all the rudimentary kind of stuff you know but I remember getting like a bit fed up with all of that and kind of wanting to dig in and like it was the like I said earlier like that that big dirty kind of kind of like really warm big sound yeah I just kind of thought that it could do so much more than I was being taught so you know my parents big music fans as they are you know they love blues music and rock music and stuff from the 60s 70s 80s that's where I really got into it and I would go home and I'd like jam with my dad's records and, and my mom's music and I'd just play then I'd go to school and then I'd do the classical thing and it just all kind of melded together you know and I'm super lucky to have you know a family that's so supportive musically with that you know because that was a big thing for me Hendrix was probably the biggest one you know from all that uh, I swear mate that he has got to be one of the biggest influences ever. And him as a person uh, for what he went through, but to what he achieved and what he did. Hey, we never got to see him, but mm. if we if we could have done, he would have been up on the list, you know, to, to, to see him. But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, w- I wish I could. Of, I mean, I'm so jealous. My dad actually got to see him at the Isle of Wight Pop Festival, which I'm no just way. like, every time I think about that, I'm just like, oh, go with that. Come on, that's so, so jealous. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. I mean, and, and that was one of his last performances, I think, you know, really? like that was, I think that was 70, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think he did a couple more, but that was one of the last ones. So, it's, well, incredible, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really, fantastic that you took inspiration from that man for your sound well I, I think it came I think even I think the more I thought about it like it was kind of a natural kind of progression towards him because you know he was really pushing the boundaries and wanting to do different things and experiment with different sounds and that's kind of what I was doing you know learning my kind of rudiments of the classical music but then really exploring with all the different colors and finding out that music you know more and more as I got older and stuff you know and and uh yeah he was just such an inspiration for that you know it was a bit of a bigger picture of what he stood for and what he thought he was trying to put out into the universe through his music and I guess uh, approaching that it was just very it just seemed very natural to me and like and the cello uh, well kind of it should be the way I think in a lot of instruments really like you uh you, you don't you actually get a bigger sound when you actually play a little softer like a lot of people don't know Eric Clapton, Hendrix, they, they crank their amps up really, really loud, but they're, you know, they, they play soft, so then the sound is actually way bigger, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So what have you been your favourite tracks, and what what of his do you like listening to the most? That's a great question. Have you got two hours? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, so, I, I, probably one of my f- absolute favourite, favorites has got to be little wing that's such a beautiful song you know um I, I do a cover of that actually which is fun yeah little wings great voodoo child's a good one you know that i love yeah um 
I mean, there's so many, you know. Um, Red House, of course, was his amazing slow blues. I mean, those are probably up there. Fire, too, is great. I can remember the first time I heard that, right? I was, when I first started working, and I was working as a conference porter for the Hilton in Bromsgrove, okay? Okay. And somebody had that in one of their meeting rooms. And I, was just, I heard it playing. I think I must have been, well, I was 16 when I first heard that. I probably obviously paid about 12, 13 quid for that. <laughs> but that, that album, uh, you know, introducing, you know, them tunes into my life and having obviously a huge, massive, massive, massive impact. You know, and here we are talking about, you know, an album that came out in 1997. The greatest hits uh, compilation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's great. It's really good. It's got all the really amazing tunes on yeah. there, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Oh, you know. What's your favorite? What's your favorite Hendrix tune? <laughs> all of it. <laughs> yeah, all of it. You know, from Purple Haze to... Obviously, you know, Watchtower, it's a Dylan tune, but that's of it. You know, Foxy Lady, uh, Sandcastle's Made of Sand. I think Sandcastle Made of Sand, that has got to be one of my favourite. That's definitely right up there for me. Yeah. I just love the sound of it. I love the way he sings it, the words, the way yeah. he plays on it. It's just that has a real serious, he's just real dead you know, mega, which obviously we can talk about another person that comes into the same sort of category. I love Jack White. Yeah, you Jack know? White is incredible. Yeah, to me, I uh, there's two real mega people who I really do love, and that's Noel and Jack. But Jack, to me, is above Noel with his creativity, his sound, and oh everything about him. Yeah, totally, 100%. I mean, I'm not, I've never really been like a big, like, Oasis fan, to be quite honest with you. I'm sure. Hands up there. I'm not really. <laughs> no, that's you know, okay. You can yeah, say I'm that. Like, but like, Jack White, and the, I remember when I first heard the White Stripes, it was just like the most incredible thing. And I kind of gravitated towards the more kind of like, B-side songs on that uh, on the album that had Seven Nation Army and stuff on it, you know, like yeah. Ball and Biscuit. That was a great song, really dirty, bluesy stuff, man. I love that, you know. Oh, I mean, absolutely. Uh, I think that's why I probably preferred like Blur over Oasis as well, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I can honestly say, before I heard Oasis, the first CD I bought was the Park Life album. Oh, wow. Right. And I mean, so Blur really was in was in my life before, obviously, them two brothers, let's say. Yeah. Uh, and then, obviously, we know all the history and all of that. Oh, but, man, it's a drama. It's like the real housewives or something. I'm like, I don't want to, you know. Hear no, I know, I know. Like, I just want to <laughs> listen to some great music and and. Yeah. and and Blur had that, man, and especially what happened with the Gorillas as well, man. Big fan of them, too, you know? I think Damon is truly, oh truly, truly big-time genius. He's remarkable. I mean, I mean, it comes... I mean, this might be quite, like, you know... Uh, I mean, I'm not sure if everyone's going to agree with me in this statement, but, like, it gets close to, like, the genius of, like, to me, someone... That I really like as well, called you know Prince. You know he's an yeah. amazing genius. Yeah, I kind of I kind of put those two together. I mean, you know Prince. I mean, you know, yeah, he's, yeah, he's yeah, Prince, yeah. But like, like, you know what I'm saying? You know, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I really, really do. I mean, all these people like uh, Damon is absolutely big time, big time. I, I've yeah. never said this. I've tell him, I've never said this to anyone. But when we start, when we can talk about Damon Albarn. Uh, and how much of a genius he, he is. I'll tell you something, I'm going to throw it out there. He could be in the same league as David Bowie. Ooh, man, that's another one we could talk about. 
it is because <laughs> all these all these different people of legends, uh, you know, they're the best. Well, and uh, it's beautiful to see. I think as a society, I think we really need to like keep that progression going because I think we can get locked into all the old guys and all these little legends. But you know, like people like Damon and these newer people, you know, new now. But you know, what I mean, like the the, the, the progression of music we, it's so important to kind of keep that going you know and to celebrate the people that come up and become legends again you know because it's so important i'm a big I'm a big proponent of that you know yeah and and and, and in all fairness Callum, you're part of that because oh, thanks man with it's your with, with your music and the instrument that you're playing and the sound that you're creating and the way you're pushing forward and people that you've met already and the way that you're progressing um you know we talk about the gorillas yeah, and some yeah. like Damon Albarn, right? Yeah. So I wouldn't put it past him if he came to a guy like yourself and wanted obviously oh. someone like you to play on any of his music because that's the sort of sound where you can really progress. You're absolutely right in what you're saying with you musicians. Let's unlock the doors. Let's get out there. Let's, let's break the glass, man. That's yeah, let's awesome. smash break the glass. glass. Break tradition. Just, just you know, smash the doors down music, and get yeah. out there and create yeah. the new stars of yeah. today for tomorrow. Because let's put it this way: uh, Mojo at the moment's got Wello on the front cover, right? <laughs> yeah, and it's just we can say. So where are the new? Stars going to be on the front cover I mean, of the magazines. Well, I will say Weller is great though. I do like his <laughs> music; it's cool. Yeah, too. of but, course, but, of course. But but it, but it's but it is important. Yeah, I do think it's important to to celebrate. You know what's what's coming now. You know, yeah. It really is. It really is. Uh, and I suppose with what the universe and Simon's universe is all about, is speaking to guys like yourself and getting out I'm there grateful yeah, thank on. you and for people to know uh this is happening you know your thoughts opinions you know fu future and uh progression that's the key word man progression progression it's so true you know i mean and i guess i i really do feel like not to sound like obnoxious or anything but i do feel like i really well, I'd like to think I embody that with the cello thing, trying to push that boundary, you know, because I mean, I have, you know, come under fire by some super traditional classical people as well, you know, for doing it and stuff. And because there's kind of a difference, it's interesting. You've got like the kind of like, you know, breakout classical kind of stars, you know, like, you, you know, like they're doing kind of rock stuff, but kind of more in a classical way. But then you've got people like, me and there's some other cellists in America and some violinists that are doing the singer songwriter thing that are kind of away from that, you know, especially what I'm doing where I'm kind of wanting to just come, kind of almost come like more freshly from the rock thing and, and I'll turn the music instead of from classical then, do you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's it just seems more natural to me, I guess, from my upbringing being around blues music and stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I mean, that sound, you know? you know, the rock blues sound is really important. Uh, and it's something that Kelly. I truly, really love because of people like Jack. And yeah. People like uh, C6 Steve. Oh, uh, man. Amazing. Um, he is amazing. He is or like Johnny Winter. I don't know if you know Johnny Winter. He was a big influence on me as well. So he's he was an amazing blues guitar player from the 60s. He was around with Hendrix. He played at Woodstock. Right. Um, he was the brother of Edgar Winter, you know, Frankenstein, don't know if you know. Oh, OK. Too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he, he used to play killer slide guitar. And he, 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 he the reason I brought him up when he said C6 Steve is because the style is a little kind of similar. I mean, Johnny had like a full band and everything. But like, yeah, it's, it's that vibe, that dirty vibe, the excitable vibe, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So killer for me, man. You know, same as like. Albert King as well had that vibe as well, that very up, excitable blues thing, you know, which is just, you know, amazing. Steve Ray Vaughan's another guy too, you know, which is amazing, you know. Have you been in America playing? Yeah, I have many, a lot. I mean, I, uh, 
I went to college there. I, 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 I lived there for five years in New York, which was a, an amazing experience. I started studied at a conservatory called the New School for Jazz and Contemporary Music. So I was, you know, when I got out of school, I really didn't, I was fighting going to like a, you know, a classical like program because there's not much else for the cello, you know? So I found this great school and did the audition and I got in and I was really excited because I was like, I get to go to uni and I get to go and play cello with all these other people. And it, they're, they're wanting to push the boundaries and do really cool progressive music, you know? And yeah. I was the first celloist actually I've ever had into the program, which was pretty cool as well, you know? So, yeah, that's amazing. That's what kind of really started everything professionally for me, you know? After college, I, 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 I did drop out, I will say. I didn't stay for the whole time. But because I did that, I felt like I really honed my chops into my songwriting, you know? and got out on the scene, played, jammed with anyone I could, you know, which actually, if you don't mind, brings me to a, a cool story uh, of how I met the uh, Paul family, you know, Les Paul, uh, guitarist. Whoa. Uh, uh, I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I got really, really friendly with them from meeting, uh, from meeting his son, Rusty. And right. he was, he, he was, he was just at a jam. It was like BB King's blues club or something. And I was, up there jamming away my electric cello with my strap you know all, all yeah, young yeah. and all kind of you know and uh and uh he uh he just like really like he grabbed his chair sat right in front of the stage like really close and he just loved it and then we were just buddies ever since you know and he helped me out and you know it was amazing so that was the kind of progression you know from from me to that you know yeah that's a pretty big deal <laughs> Because they're, you know, obviously with the business that they have, you know, is, 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 well, that's mega. It was cool, you know, especially this like 19 year old kid, you know, from, from Paisley, Scotland. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, just the, you know, just what are the chances of that? You know, it's crazy. Do you especially still talk? In New York. He passed away, unfortunately. Yeah. He's no longer with us, Rusty. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's, 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 that's, that was, that was really hard then. It's like, he was, it was, it was amazing. You know, he, he stood up for me and he was there and really understood what I was trying to do when other people didn't, you know, and it was, and that, that ties into the, you know, amazing evolution and progression of their mentality towards instruments and music. His dad was a complete innovator, you know? So, yeah. you know, and I think that's why we kind of, you know, um, hit it off, you know? That's pretty amazing. Yeah, I know it's sad, but you know, it was like it's he was, you know, he was older and stuff, but yeah, it's it's sure. it was very, very sad, you know. But uh yeah. yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Hey. Shit life. happens in life, dude. I know. That's but the good thing I've got music, you know, that 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 helps that helps heal that, you know. <laughs> yeah. I think it's the biggest absolute therapy in absolute world 100 percent, man right it really it, is like believe me it, it's you um, you can't say the words of what mm -hmm. it means to so many so many billions billions of people well that's what's amazing about it because like you know they're there are no words it's like you're you know it's it's all it's all just coming in orally it's such a natural thing you know yeah yeah so how big were the crowds like in america when you were playing well so i so when i was there i i i really built up from the from, from the ground you know I, you know i was, when i was starting i was playing you know small clubs and stuff and then sure. started supporting people and kind of got a bit bigger um and uh, I mean, I will say that like my, my, my following definitely is, so it's a funny thing. So I, pro I probably over there probably played for like three or 400, you know, but it, my, my, my fan base here in the UK, because when I came home uh, after the five years, I really built up my thing even bigger here back in, I think it was like 2014, 15 time. And then yeah. I really started getting my own music kind of, really i mean it was to get, i released my first album in new york but it really started to really take shape you know here yeah. and now with my music that i my new music with which i just released uh, at, towards the end of last year my yeah. new singles 
um uh you know it's quite amazing actually what ha what's happened with the numbers online in america it's just really skyrocketed like it, more than i would ever expect you know oh, it was amazing you know that's uh, good the, the stores and spotify and streaming and and yeah it's really really cool you know so yeah it's it's, it's kind of funny sometimes like when you're in a place you go away and then it gets you know it gets bigger there and then you go way back and it gets bigger there and it's like it's kind of a two and pro situation with yeah. music sometimes. You have to sometimes go away from a place, then come back and go away. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Totally. So have you got plans to get out on the road in the United States pretty soon when you can? Well, I mean, when I can, I'm not sure when that's going to happen. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of more so right now focused on getting my, uh, my show together, my tour dates for, for this summer in the UK, which I'm excited about. I guess going into the kind of lockdown, that, that was, that's been pretty tough on me, not being able to play live for an audience. It's been great doing live stream gigs and stuff, but actually playing live to an audience, you get such, I don't know, I get inspiration for writing and stuff too, you know? So it's like, it's a whole thing. It's like this whole rule kind of like trip that you're on with everyone, you know, it's cool. It's going to be so great, you know, to, to go out and do that, you know, which I'm, I'm going to be going and doing that this summer, which I'm just so, so happy about, you know, it's been something that I've been looking forward to for a long time. And it's going to be so great to get out, you know, yeah. and, and, and even like play for people that and new fans that I've built up during lockdown as well, because I've been doing a lot of the streaming stuff and playing a bunch of online festivals. So that's going to be really fun, you know. Well, so, well what dates and what parts of Britain are you playing? Cool. So let's see here. So on the on the twentieth of June, I'm playing the Beardy Folk Festival, and that's in Hopton. Right. If you know where that is in England? Yeah. So that's I probably do, exciting. but yeah, yeah. I think is I that, do. Is that is that it? You're like, oh shit! Is that the town <laughs> next to me? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but that's gonna be really cool because I'm doing my solo show. But I'm also actually gonna be playing with a band called Brother C as well. So that'll be fun playing cello for them. So they're right, okay. That's they're, good. A, they're a great band that you should that you should check out, actually. I'll check them yeah. out today. Yeah, do it, do it. Gotta to, gotta to spread the word, you know. Yeah. And then uh, after that, um, well, I'm gonna be headlining uh, a festival which I'm really, really excited about. By the way, when I say after that, I'm just going down my list. It's not yeah, actually. Yeah, hard. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so the 13th of June, I'm headlining Lost Fest down in Cornwall, which I'm really excited about. Well, that will be good. Cornwall, man, I absolutely love Cornwall. You know, it's like it, they've really been people of Cornwall have been amazing to me in my music. You know, they, they, they're they big supporters. So, you know, I'm really appreciative of that. that that's I think amazing it's a me. great place for, for culture, for music, for people, yeah. uh, the weather. Um, the it's, California of the UK, man, you know? Yeah, pretty much is. <laughs> pretty much, you know? So, I and, mean, uh, if you can afford it, that's where you're going to be. Right? Yeah, for sure. And, uh, oh, the next one, I'm really excited about this one. So I've been playing this um, for the, I'm playing this festival for the, for the last couple, couple of years. It's, it's called the John Martin Gathering. If you know, John right. Martin's a big influence on me. Scottish singer-songwriter John Martin. Right. <laughs> Don't know if you yeah do, do you know do you know John Martin? I uh, I can I'll tell you say about it. yeah tell us about <laughs> him tell us cool about so him. John Martin is an amazing Scottish singer songwriter um he's not with us anymore unfortunately but like yeah. yeah he was he was he was around in like the kind of like kind of seventies eighties nineties onwards you know and he was just like yo, he was like so beyond this time, you know, he had a real bluesy sound kind of mixed in with the folk and it was a really cool evolution. Definitely one of the first ones to really start getting into alternative tunings and stuff on the guitar, you know, which is cool, you know, um, like kind of the Bert Yanchi kind of stuff, you know, very similar, but yeah, he was cool. Uh, and, and there's like an appreciation festival that's run by his family and his good friends, you know, uh, called the John Martin Gathering to actually help you know, up and coming musicians and uh, people that appreciate John Martin, you know, so it's a really great festival and it's called The Gathering because it's like, it really does feel like a family gathering. It's really nice, you know, yeah. um, and uh, celebrates his music. So they have featured artists and there's some workshops, you know, and uh, yeah, that's going to be done in Hackforth. It's in this little village hall. It's really, really, really fun in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it's great. Hackforth Village Hall. 
and that's the weekend of June 25th, 26th, and 27th. So that's nice. so I'll be down there for the weekend. So that'd be great. And uh, I know, and I'm gonna tell you about another date, which I'm really, 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 really excited about. Um, so this is down in Box, England. Don't right. know if you know where that is, right? So that's gonna be on the fourth of July. Fourth of July celebration, and uh, and that's actually for a concert season called the Stumbox uh, concert series, and that is actually part of uh, Real World Studios, which is Peter Gabriel's studio down in, in Box, England. Yeah, so they his his uh, his kind of like the empire estate business. They they do they run this concert series for um, both established artists and up and coming artists. They like uh, to 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 you know to that they want to push and stuff so yeah so that's that's been a really amazing thing to get chosen for that you know yeah that was amazing i'm a massive gabriel fan i yeah. absolutely love gen old genesis it's really interesting to know that he's still putting into music now well he's really incredible that way and he's been doing that with the for a long time, actually, with international artists, uh, you know, really amazing. You know, he, he has a world music label as well. And he really encourages all sorts of cultures to get together and be inspired. You know, like he, he, he's also behind, you know, uh, the WOMAD Festival as well, which is cool, you know. Yeah. And um, so it's amazing. I mean, that's that's definitely one of the inspirations for me. And, um, and and Paul McElinden, with, uh, which is amazing. Uh, he's amazing. He's very famous, like Scottish uh conductor an amazing yeah. kind of entrepreneur and we we both put together so he basically approached me to start a really cool um project in scotland called musicians in exile which is for refugee and asylum seeking musicians you know right and so we we we, we started the scottish version together here a couple of years ago um he he, he did the project uh, before in germany and different places but uh he um but yeah we, we started the, the one here together and you know bringing cultures together helping them get you know acquainted in their new home is just such an inspiration and definitely peter gabriel is is all about that which is really nice that all these connections are happening you know so that's yeah, definitely they, a very cool project you know that I'm, I, I i really want to give back and help people you know uh and, and that really is important yeah you, you, know, have to, man. you have to, man. You have to. You have yeah. to. Uh, yeah. Because whatever, whatever um, way that people can help, you never know where it's going to obviously lead to or where things can go. The music community or the music universe now, Callum, is so more important than ever. Yeah. Because, you know, we can talk about the way that records are sold and we can talk about, you know, people not playing at the minute, but we'll come back to obviously where you got to smash the grass and get out. Yeah. Hel helping, helping. People can't be pretentious anymore in music. No, no. People well, can't put their nose up to people and go, I'm not interested in that because that's not going to help anyone. It's not going to happen though. I mean, even people... People are going to be so giving to, to I think, to up and coming musicians and to help now, you know, like I really like I heard something the other day from a friend that they were saying that like there, there's this kind of movement happening now for even before when concerts come back, they're saying really, you know, let's try and mini really minimize like comps on tickets as well. Let's really help and support and buy tickets to shows, you know, don't try and get freebies. Let's try and really, you know, uh, help our musicians right now, you know, it's yeah. so important. Yeah, there's so many conversations that I'm having at the minute about pushing things forward. And I think, you know, uh, a lot of people, uh, a lot of you uh, young musicians kind of mm -hmm. are having to start to think like a businessman. Um, um, I'm, how they're going to progress. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I kind of think, I mean, my son we're saying this but i kind of think that we you, that the artists should always think that way at least a little bit it doesn't need to be yeah. forefront but you, you you it is a it is a business people want to realize this is my business this is you know the the the, the up-and-coming you know 15 year old uh 
down the street that plays guitar and sings, that's trying to get going around the open mics. It is a business, you know. They're it, they're gearing up towards the business. It's, it's it's like it's like it's like any job. We deserve to get paid, and we deserve it deserves to be nurtured, and it, it's just such an important thing. And people need to recognize that. And I really think this whole experience with lockdown is actually pretty cleansing to that. And I think it's really going to help. You know, I think. Uh, can I can only speak about what. I've learned by talking to musicians and if I was a musician myself every single day from March 2020 to coming into May 2021 if I was a musician every single day let's say two hours I'd be playing because time you get on that stage and and what you want to give and how you want to progress and what you want to create yeah that's big time because you know that's that's gonna hopefully get people on your side uh for fans and and, and how you progress i mean that's the thing In, in my case it's interesting you know it's like I, I, I built my whole thing up. Maybe it's just the time that I was kind of doing it, but I built my whole thing up really from live. You know, that's when people really get it. You know, when they see me live, it's like, wow, that's cool, you know? And I built it up before my online thing got got real, got real really good, you know? So it's like, it's it, it's funny with certain, with different people, different things, but it's so true. If you if you have a, if you have a killer live show and, you, and people really receive you well live, I think that's really the answer in my opinion. I think that is so key you know because you can get you can make it sounding as great as you want on your computer but if you can't do it live then it's like you know (laughs) and i think i mean uh also with playing live i'm sure it it gives you inspiration by the time that you you you're playing live and think right when i go into the studio this is what i've learned and when you know with your song your songwriting and with something that you've learned and put together, the time you get into the studio and you put it out, it must all help to going in the right direction. Yeah, it does. It does. It's like it's it, it's it's it 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 helps flow. You know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Which is a song of mine. If anyone wants to check it, out. <laughs> very good, very good. Hey, I'm on it, man. Yeah, you got, this is what it's all about. You gotta sell it. So <laughs> yeah, man. On that note as well, I'm going to tell you my next date as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is quite cool, actually, having a little bit of chat in between the dates. I like it. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm also going to play the Rock Oyster Festival, which is another one in Cornwall I'm going to do. So that's really exciting. That's a really, really cool festival. And that is on the 31st of July. So put that oh. in, your, in your calendar. So that's really cool. And um Another one is in Chelmsford. I'm supporting a band called Willie and the Bandits. Have you heard of them? They're a great band. The na- and uh, yeah, again, like the name rings a bell. Yeah, uh, we're wanting to do some collabs and stuff. You know, like we're, we're we've been we've been kind of like eyeing each other up for a while, and like during the lockdown, we're we're on some of the same bills, and we we so we're really happy that we can do like a kind of mutual show together. So that that'll be fun. You know, that's got to be a real buzz for yourself. Oh, yeah. I love collaborations, man. It's one of my, one of my most favorite things. I mean, especially as like a writer, because I, I write, you know, a lot for, you know, I'm a, I'm a publisher, 23rd Music Publishing. Uh, this tied with Notting Hill Music Publishing. Why didn't I write you know, for other artists as well and stuff? So it's like collaborations are so fun. You know, you're doing like electronic music or any kind of music like uh like I've been, I've been writing a lot with a really amazing guy, uh, Michael Ronstadt. We've been writing a lot, and he's the nephew of Linda Ronstadt, very, very famous American singer. He, he, he sings and plays cello. He's great, and we're, we've been coming up with some really, really amazing stuff during lockdown. I'm so proud. Just amazing what you could do, sharing files back and forth, like you know, session files. And yeah, we're, 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 that, that's going to be music that we're going to kind of that we're going to release, you know, at some point. So. 
soon i think so that's really cool man that's really fun another one actually an album that just came out recently uh, is a guy called will johns he's uh, eric clapton's nephew i'm going to i'm working with all the all the family aren't i uh eric clapton's nephew he released an album called blues daddy uh and i'm, I'm featured on a song of that so you guys should check that out too. it's really it's really it's, it's doing well so i'm, I'm really happy about that. yeah and you know what Callum? i think it really is absolute excellent that you're you're getting to work with all these people right because, and, uh, and, and keep busy and, and just keep I, I just like i said like you got to keep going and just to keep doing all this stuff in lockdown it's been really inspiring actually you know yeah because let's not be around the bush here at some stage <laughs> in the future right there could be something where the magic happens and there's a hit song and you're on it you know we we, you know, have never know. You never know. Would you want that? Do you think about that? Of course. I mean, I think I'd be. I think I'd be <laughs> dumb not to want that. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. I mean, that's the cool thing, especially with doing the writing thing. You're writing once. You never know what's gonna, you know, what's 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 gonna hit or whatever. And it's it's, it's I I kind of I think with music, man. I think I really like that mystery. You know, some people, oh, they, they want to get, you know, have everything super prepared and everything. And, and, and that is important, you know, get your set together and everything. But I mean more in the sense of like, like I do a lot of like open kind of jamming in my song structure. So I have a little bit prepared to be able to just go, I'm going to jam like the rock bands did in the seventies, like bands like Mountain and like, you know, Humble Pie. Absolutely. I mean, even like, like even like um, I don't know, like Free as well, Bad Company, all those guys, you know. Yeah, yeah. love all that. It's just so much music, man, isn't there? It's just crazy when you start thinking about it and talking about. It. Wow. Absolutely, absolutely. Over the next, like, say, six years, is there any particular acts or or bands that you would like to see or maybe support or people you'd like to work with? That's a good question. Wow. Well. There's a band. Do you? Know, I was curious if you if you knew this band. There's a band called the John Butler Trio. Have you heard of them? The Great name rings a bell, but off the top of my head, I could tell you like. So- yeah. Yeah, great band. Check them out from from Australia. They're you know they're a trio. They're these right. the guy. The guy's so killer. He kind of influenced me a little bit from from some of my electronic setup actually. Um, but he plays acoustic guitar like 12 string guitar and he takes the 12 string off so it's 11 string but he puts that through like a martial amp and effects and yeah and he's got a bass player and a drummer and it's just very really cool almost kind of surf rocky kind of music you know yeah and um so like yeah that's definitely someone yeah you know, definitely someone that i would love to like support or work with or whatever he's really cool who else um but he's probably gonna die before i get to like i'd be so how sick would it be to do something like ozzy osborne or something like that? that'd be brilliant that'd be amazing i've seen ozzy <laughs> with the cello I've... rocking out with that oh voice. man uh, do you know what i absolutely love ozzy right yeah I he's absolutely amazing absolutely love that man sabbath yeah yeah sabbath. i saw black sabbath i saw black oh, sabbath oh shit really i saw him in birmingham uh which is obviously pretty good you know, hometown sort of thing. I met, I went with a mate I used to work with. And uh, before I even went to see that band, I was saying to like my dad, uh, I'm not sure if I should go or not because like I'm an, in, I'm an, in, I'm an, in, I'm an indie kid, right? Uh, I'm an indie you know. kid, but you have to broaden your horizon. You can't box yourself in, you know? Yeah. No. No, you can't, because that doesn't help anyone. So yeah. I went, I saw him, and you know what? He, <laughs> he, he was just, I mean, I just love his character and him as a person. Yo. But Yo. you know what? He had the whole crowd in the palm of his hand, waving his right? arms. Right? Through the tunes. Amazing. <laughs> It's really funny, man. I saw him at the, I saw him at download actually. Uh, the last the, I was at the last download festival, and uh, he was doing a solo stuff. You know, I think Zach Wild was playing guitar, and yeah, uh, and he, he pretty much all he really said he sang amazingly, and he yeah. pulled the strings hard. But all he said was, "I'm not gonna, I'll, I'll be fair." But I was, all he said was, "I can't effing hear you, I can't hear you," and then he sang. It was hilarious, man. But he just, just from saying that, people were just like, ah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you amazing. Know, he just knows how to do it, man. Oh, he does. He really, really does. He, he is a, he, you know, he well, is up there with the best. That goes into the kind of like, if you don't mind me saying, like that goes into the kind of, the almost kind of business side of, I, I, I kind of think that like honing your art with like being able to like get the audience together, even, even if you're just like, when you're not singing, when it's an instrumental, if you really just, as an own, you know, do what you do, practice, you know, and get techniques together to be able to, you know, really bring the crowd together. That That's half the battle. It's so important then, you know? And I, I think like, for me, like, it's, it's, it's when I, you know, if for example, I, I, I lock eyes with someone in the audience, whatever they're into, whatever, that just gets me wanting to give it more to them, you know? So it's a yeah. very, it should be a natural thing, I think, you know? Yeah, if you, but it's just, it's giving the, the what's the right word? Um, the, the kind of respect, I guess, to the audience of, of giving that power when they look like they want it, you give it to them and then they'll be forever grateful, you know? It's so important, it's so important. And it doesn't matter if you, yeah. you, you've you got like a uh, hundred people or 2000 people, right? Just for uh, them, man. It's just for them. For them. You know? And yeah. when you're looking out and you've got time when obviously when you're playing or if you're singing or whatever to catch that person, right? That person wants you to go like, you know what? I'm really happy you're here because yeah. you know what? I want to make sure you have a good time and you're happy. Yeah, for sure. It's, and that is just as important in the business than anything. It really is, man. It really is. There's a lot. A lot of people don't realize how much there is to this business. I believe. You know, I believe. <laughs> yeah, it is, man. It's, it's not, you know, it's not for the faint of heart. That's for sure. No, you got to be pretty. You got to be pretty. You got to be pretty tough. You got to be on be, it like a car bonnet. Because the more you give to people, the more it's going to benefit yourself. Yeah, so, the more you get back, you know, and yeah. it's like, and, it, and that's not like, I will say that you, you're, not, you're not just doing it to be like, oh, I'm going to be nice to you, give me your money. It's like, it's more, it's, way, <laughs> it's like, you know, it's just like, way more than that. It's like, it's like, you, I genuinely really, really want to, and I've always had that want ever since I've been young. And it's just, I don't know, I think I, I, I just, I want to care about people, you know, it's just in my, yeah. in my whole thing, you know, I don't know. I that's can't explain. A, yeah, I, I I feel the same way with what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, for people to, you know, feel happy, laugh, mm -hmm. you know, learn something with joy, satisfaction. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get no satisfaction. Well, here we are. <laughs> Mate, absolutely. Get a load of this, right? So, couple, couple <laughs> okay. of years, couple of years ago. Uh, the Stones were playing at Murray Fields, right? And me and Susanna went to see the oh, band. No way. Yeah, Susanna loves music. So awesome. when we first got together, like going to gigs and going out to places was the thing that we did. So Susanna got the tickets for us to go and see the Stones up in Murray Fields. Wow. So I got the train up, train up from Birmingham to Newcastle. Uh, we drove up to Edinburgh. We stayed at stayed at like Airbnb in Edinburgh. Nice. But we went to we, we went to uh, Mowfields early. We sat we stood outside having like a smoke and a beer and whatever, right? This big Mercedes goes past. And you've got the geezer in the back waving like royalty. Yeah. It was no Mick way. Mick Jagger drove straight past us. Right. No way. Yeah. And like, we're like, Jesus Christ, you know, we've just seen him. Well, I've heard they're, they're like really a bunch of lovely guys. Like I actually, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Mick Taylor, the original, one of the original yes. guitar players. The yeah, band. Yeah. I, that's, that's another person that I got to work with and meet at the Jack Bruce tribute concert in London, actually. The first gig I did with him, guess what? It was on my 21st birthday. I opened up for Jack Bruce at the Edinburgh Jazz and Blues Festival. How crazy yeah. is that? Unbelievable. Yeah. That was the best gig I've ever been to. And Jagger had 8,000 people in the palm of his hand. 
Yeah. And I thought I was going to be more excited about seeing Keith, right? Which he was amazing. But of Jag- course. Jagger was just absolutely, mate. Uh, he's, a, he's a beaming light, but how does he, his, his energy is just ridiculous from the minute the lights go down or up or whatever time it is till the, till the end of the show, you know, it's crazy. You think how old the guy is and, you know, yeah. to, st- to still. Well, that actually to ties that. into what we're talking about. Like, you keep going, you don't stop. That's the thing is, if you stop, that's it, you know. If you keep going, then you can, you know, you can do that, you know. I really absolutely, believe that. Absolutely. I mean, you know, what a, a golden yeah, period. Man, golden period. And, and, and you know, A-class, top. Uh, top, top, top. No doubt about it. Oh, top it. level, man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, they brought they they brought they broke through that glass ceiling ceiling well, ceiling ceiling before time was even you know. Remember, like one of the first times my parents brought me to like a rock gig. You know, I mean, like I think what was my first? I think my first concert was Alice Cooper. Actually, I was pretty. Crazy. Wow, that's pretty. Oh, that's that 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 is good. Yeah, that's and amazing. Then, like, we were like, whoa, this is awesome, man. I think yeah, Justin's sister opened up or something. It was pretty crazy, man. Mine was Brian May, and I was like seventeen. So I think it was like 98, uh, I'm like 17, and not only am I seeing him play, I'm sat with him backstage, right, just me and my dad. He's talking to us saying like, uh, what songs do you want me to play tonight? Mate, I'm sat with like, you know, one of the greatest guitarists of all time, and I could hardly talk, right? And he said, I'm going to do my sound check now, do you want to come and see it? And I'm like, uh, 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 uh. So he's like, you know, what do you think about? <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking he's like, what do you think about this? And that's that's pretty unbelievable. Oh yeah, man, that's amazing, man. It's yeah. like, it's just like that. You'll you'll and you never forget that first experience, that first time. It just it sticks with you, and that that can be for a lot of people like what makes them so obsessed and wanting just to keep going with the music and supporting musicians globally. You know? Yeah. So, that's funny you bring up Brian May though, man, because I've got kind of a little connection to that too, a little one. Oh yeah. My 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 company, um, uh, NS Design, not my company, but like company that, that I'm an artist of, uh, Ned Steinberger. Uh, he, he used to he used to make uh, the the little uh, you know little Steinberger guitars and stuff. Right. He started a company called NS Design that make my electric cellos and violins. No and, way. And, yeah, and um, one of the uh, their partners, the Bass Centre in London, they're also the main partners of Brian May Guitars as well. Whoa. So where that's all from, it's all the kind of same, the same kind of group, you know, which is quite cool. So there, there's that, I just want to throw that in there, you know. I've not seen McCartney. Uh, will I ever get to see him? I really don't know. Maybe it's too late, but if I did, it would be amazing. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Be cool. And I mean... Yeah, I've seen I've seen quite a few legends, but I wouldn't be downhearted if I didn't. If I did, it would be I'd be happy. I mean, yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying, man. I mean, like saying that, but I mean, for me, talking about like, the Beatles, like George Harrison, I wish I could have seen him. He was incredible. He, to me, he's one of the, you know, I mean, probably John Lennon and George Harrison are probably my they're my favorite out of those guys. They're my two favorite Beatles. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a lot of people realize how good a guitar player George was. He was just phenomenal. You know, Amazing. on the level of like someone like I don't know another person like you know like Frank Zappa was a big influence of mine too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Great guitar player. Yeah, I really George. George is my favorite Beatle, and as much as I love John, there was something really magical about George. Yeah, He's very spiritual as well. Spiritual. You know? Yeah. yeah. Amazing, amazing man. I love, like, I just love them people from that time period. And it's right, it was a very special time period. But you know, like we were saying earlier, we're, we're, we're taking all of that amazing stuff and we're mixing up and we're making something completely fresh and new, you know. And you're really, I really think you're gonna see this is my spec, this is Calvin Girl speculation, but I really think yeah. we get out of lockdown, I think you're gonna see a lot of influence and callbacks majorly to that music as we go forward i think it's going to be a really amazing kind of renaissance like that you're going to see you know um theater is a big part of my life because of my grandmother my grandmother was principal dancer at all belly in london 
Oh, wow. Right. And then she became a choreographer. But when she was a dancer, she worked in the West End, like all her pretty much her work in life. So um, when when she was in the ballet and that, her train got bummed and um, during obviously Second World War, it affected her eyesight. Oh, that's right? awful, man. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. So then she became a choreographer, but she worked in the theatre all her all her working life. Right? Wow, that's awesome. And with my nan, uh, she had like a drama theatre school in London back in the day when she was working as well. Anita Dobson went Ooh. to my nan's uh, drama school. So with Anita going to my nan's drama school. That's amazing, man. That's so yeah. cool. Yeah. Which I take a lot of inspiration from my grandmother, Callum. You oh, know? my God. For, like, I say family is, like, so important, man. So that's, yeah. you know, if it wasn't for that, man. You know, absolutely. Like, absolutely. I, I actually composed music for an off-Broadway show in New York called Division Avenue. Wow. It was, it was part of a festival as well, and, and I, I, I won uh, Best Sound Design Composition for that, uh, which was cool, which is amazing, you know? When you have an orchestra within a show... Yeah, and like when you have the musicians and the band that, as say, you're going to be working there for like say eight weeks or twelve months or whatever it is, would you ever look into doing that as a job? For yeah, I mean, like yeah, I mean, I do, I do freelance like cello work as well as my own thing. You know, I play play cello for lots of different things. And I'm very open for it. Any- anything i think i think it's i think it's i think it's not good to be close-minded but i will say it's important to feel like you can say no to certain things that that's totally fine i think you know i think it's an important yes. way of like navigating the business but like um i mean i think for now i think i'm i'm, I'm really focusing on my thing you know and, and and get my show back on the road and like but like eventually maybe that or that kind of thing would be cool but like yeah the one thing i really enjoy doing though is is uh which had kind of helped me kind of like build up my own sound was going in and being a cellist that could go into the recording situation and not necessarily need music you know but just to talk to the songwriter as coming from another songwriter you know being able to like you know jam and and be able to figure out what they want and i've, I've been i've been pretty i think i've been pretty successful with that and i really i love doing that you know so that's been really cool you know because i i do a lot by ear so I can kind of relate to some people that might not be so fluent on on music scores and stuff, you know. Sure. What uh, what music music studios have you been into, and what have been your best ones where you've been? Oh wow. Well, I think probably one of my most favorite was I don't know if you've heard about a studio called Avatar Studios in New York, famous recording studios in America. Like an amazing, amazing studio. It's not called Avatar anymore. It got bought over by Berkeley College of Music, actually. It's called, right. I, think, I think it's called like the Power Station now or something, but I actually applied. I was like, oh, I'm gonna get my first album together. What am I gonna do? I recorded, already recorded half of it in uh, my producer's like loft space in Berkeley, you know, a little kind of ring, kind of, kind of really cool, cool room, you know, but like, you know, it's, a bit kind of makeshift but it was amazing uh amazing guy brian speaker speaker sonic studios check him out guys he's amazing anyway but so we we're kind of looking like where else can we go to to do to do half of it half the rest of the album so i was like found out about this really cool thing that avatar studios was doing to help young artists by giving them a really like next to nothing to go in there and i and i, I applied and I, I got it and i and we were like oh we're going to this great recording studio where everyone's been and i've got a really cool story about that actually so yeah go we went on. in there right and we got everything set up then me and the drummer went down i think he wanted to smoke and i wanted to get some air or something so we went down the elevator from the studio to the lobby the door is open just by mistake and elvis costello and diana crawl were sitting on the couch <laughs> no way <laughs> just just chatting just figuring out scores and stuff and then we were like uh, 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 and the door is just closed. <laughs> it was hilarious. Mate, yeah. he, he is amazing. Well, they, they, that's the kind of people that go in there and work, man. You know, like John, John, John Mayer recorded some of his Continuum album in there too. So you know that was yeah, very incredible experience. Beautiful. I think I think the Kings of Leon album was recorded there. The one with Sex is on Fire and stuff. Really? Like that was recorded there right. too. Yeah. 
it's, it's quite a place, man. That was probably one of my favorites. Um, where else did I, did I really, really like? Um, there's, yeah, there's a really cool, amazing studio called uh, Gorbel Sound in Glasgow, actually. That's right. I think uh, that's had like, you know, Biffy, Claro, different people, like big, big Scottish right, okay. acts there, like yeah, well, well, yeah. all that kind of stuff. I mean, that's cool. I mean, Castle Sound Studios in Edinburgh is a great one, too. That's a really amazing studio. But there's loads. Man, there's just so many studios, man. Oh, you know, I don't want to, like, you Absolutely know, say one better than the other. But, yeah, 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 yeah. There's been some good ones, you know. Yeah. So, uh, when you met Tony Visconti, uh, how was that experience for you? Oh, it was, like, so wonderful, man. It was, like, I mean, I was, like, nerve. It was <laughs> nerve-wracking, but, like, it was so nice, you know, and like, like it, he was, he's, he's such a gentleman and he's such a sweet man. And he really like, he really cares. You know, I met, you know, I've been, I met a lot of people, you know, like over the time I've been doing this, and it's been great. But like, you know, when you meet someone like that, you're like, Oh God, is he, what's he going to be like? Is he going to be like, you know, is, is a big producer going to be like poking out all the things I'm doing wrong? But, but like, no, it was just all really, really nice and encouraging and just really I don't know, you just, just kind of, a, you know, a bit like you, just someone that really cares and is passionate about, about, about what they're doing. And, and it was, yeah, it was incredible, man. We, 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 it was like kind of the way it was, the, the show was shot, was kind of like a documentary-esque kind of show. Yeah. Showing him going around the UK looking for artists for his 50-year celebration music, uh, music concert in London. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, so we just talked and we talked about then Lizzie and we, we talked about his, his, his time. And I, I played him, you know, he asked me to, uh, to, to do a cover of the, for the concert of a thin Lizzie song, Dancing in the Moonlight, which ties into my release, you know? Uh, yeah. So I, uh, I put together a little, little thing for him and I, I played it for him. And like immediately one of his reactions was uh, like, Oh, do you know, I could hear, here's some real light symbols on this not too much you know but just a little bit of percussion or something and i was like okay cool wonder who's gonna get it. this is kind of cool okay and then we went i went home and then that night he sent me an email and he went i got it right and i was like you know what i'm gonna ask Stuart copeland to play drums with you in the concert i was like I literally almost <laughs> fell at my seat i that was like i was not what i was expecting um it was wow it was incredible yeah you know? i I've watched it. I watched. I've, I've watched that, and I watched it the other day. And with knowing about him and what he, what work he's done in his career, yeah. And for you to meet meet that man, that's a big deal. That is just something that will surely last with you forever, because oh, that that. That is like meeting music royalty in a way. And for him to say that he loves your music and then to play with another, you know, rock legend out of the police. I mean, that is really pretty something. Well, um, he's like, well, he's like the, one of the biggest record producers of all time, you know? Yeah. yeah it's, it was yeah. pretty crazy. I was like, whoa, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I know we both love Bowie and for him to be a huge part of David, you know, working with Bowie and oh, Lizzie and all, all the guys that we talked Bowie. about that we, we, we love, you know, with him in being involved in, you know, a lot of that, that's, in, that's just pretty unbelievable. That, right. really, that is really, truly something. Yeah. It's, it's, it's something that will never, that'll, that'll never, come out of my 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 psyche man that was just such an incredible and just really like encouraging experience for me you know it's just sure really really amazing and and meaning a lot of the other musicians that were a part of it as well and everyone else involved it was just a very i'll never forget that experience it was incredible you know no and to have that on your music cv let's say mate that is mega that is really truly mega <laughs> thanks man yeah it's cool it's really yeah. cool. I mean, I, I remember, I remember, I remember the, you know, being like doing the concert was pretty incredible, man. I, I, I mean, I'll tell you a funny story. I remember because like uh, uh, um, Geldof was there. Actually. Oh, right. He was performing too. Yeah, man. Did you meet there. him? I met him. <laughs> yeah, I met him, man. It was really cool. So 
I'll, I'll, I'll reel back a little bit because there's a little bit of context. But yeah. like, so, like, so I recorded the, the rehearsal when I first met, you know, Stuart Copeland. And I was jamming with him and we were figuring out what we were doing, you know. And then when it really clicked, it was just like, it was amazing. Was like the, the electricity in the room was just ridiculous. And we're rocking out. And then it's funny, the camera pans to, 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 to Geldof and he's kind of looking like, hmm, yeah, okay, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> so, so we kind of we kind of said a hello there and it was, it was nice, you know, and everything. But then it was funny. I uh right right at the concert right after he 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 he, he got off the stage because he was doing a version of uh of uh, Rebel Rebel I think you know right which was he was really cool actually you know yeah but, like uh, he came off and I was like yo man that's like that was really really good and like Stuart Copeland was there as well it was so, so trippy and I was like yeah that was really really cool and he was just like yeah man okay and just walked away <laughs> and then and then, and then Stuart Copeland he was like he just he liked that like, I was like hilarious. Great, you know, we'll never forget that. And uh, yeah, that was amazing. And one another little thing from Stuart, right when we got off stage, like we were, you know, we we were only supposed we were only supposed to play for like you know, like you know, standard five, six minutes. We played for like 20 minutes, we jammed on stage. Yeah. Like, no, we we just went on, it got edited <laughs> down, it got edited down unfortunately. And then he came out, I got I got back and had an interview to do. Then all I see is this little hand shaking and it was kind of red and it's like he's like, Callum, you made my hand bleed, man. You made my hand bleed. <laughs> no joke, true story, man. Yeah. That's true pretty that. nuts because like if you story Sorry for the long-winded stories, man. I just I just have to tell you all. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. I just find it funny. You're really supposed to be playing for six and you played it to any minute. They must yeah, have yeah, like, yeah. They must it have might been have like... even been more than that. Honestly, it went on and on and on. It was great though. It was like we, oh, you know, yeah. mate, I bet you was like, this is, this is, this is it. This is, this yeah. is mega. <laughs> it, it was, it was like, yeah, I'm, I, you know, this is, this is like, you know, you I mean, I guess you want to, you want to, I, I wasn't really thinking like, oh, I want to milk, I want to make the most situation. It was just, we were just both having so much fun, man, you know? Yeah. And like looking over and seeing Stuart Copeland into it and I'm into it. I'm just like, man, I just don't want to stop <laughs> right now, you know? <laughs> But Very cool. it, mate, you have to make the most of these opportunities. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. Yeah, you're right. You're right, man. So have you got a mate? Are you making a new album at the minute? I am, yeah. So I'm putting together a new record and I'm also putting together, like I said, the thing with Michael Runs that we're we're probably gonna be releasing singles or an AP, but like um I'm not sure what's coming first to be honest with you but like yeah i'm currently working on my on my own album as well and i just i just keep working man like i'm like you know, a workaholic on lots of things but uh, yeah sure. yeah that's really exciting that's really exciting man that's gonna be kind of along the lines of the singles um quite rocking up you know with some bluesy stuff some some kind of like proggy stuff poppy stuff all kinds of stuff man but like yeah it's, i'm really really excited about it it's, it's it's coming together and it's gonna be fun you know so do you reckon um, it'll be released this year? I can't give you a date yet, but yeah, I'm, I'm hoping for this year. Yeah, yeah. Or if, if not, early next year, but we'll, we'll see. Sure. That's really yeah. good. Thanks, right. man. Yeah, yeah. That's going to be really cool. I mean, like, it's just amazing, you know, because like, I, I've, like I said, with like sending files and stuff over to people, like, that's how I've been doing, how I've been working, you know, in my, this is my little studio space here, you know, and like, yeah, it's and, good. Like, and thanks, man. And, uh, uh, like Stan, Stanley Clark up there, man, playing bass. Nice. But, uh, but uh, you know, like a, a producer that I work with for my thing, actually, he produced the first uh, two cellos record. You know, those guys, the two cellos, they were kind of classical guys that did like uh, like covers of like Michael Jackson and different stuff. Oh, okay. Like, they were kind of, they're creation guys. They were kind of big a few years ago. Anyway, he, he, he kind of, seek some interest for me because I was trying to do something different with the cello and so he's been a great mentor of mine a guy called Kurt Yano check him out he's an amazing producer man he's done a lot of that a lot of actually like a lot of um rap stuff and hip-hop stuff and lots of stuff through the years he was involved with Miles Davis records he's done right. like, a lot of crazy stuff man yeah 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 really amazing stuff so yeah, he's been an, an inspiration to work with so yeah he 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 me and him well I, he produced the the latest singles, Demonize and Dancing in the Moonlight, and I co-produced co them with him. Yeah. So, oh, man, this has been so fun, man. Thanks yeah, for having Yeah, it's been me, brilliant. Dude. It really has been brilliant. I've really loved talking to you. It has oh, been you absolutely too, fantastic. Brother.
Oh, that's what it's that's what it's about, man. Meeting people in the music industry and keeping going and, and being friends. You know, that's that's what it is. You're really nice to talk to, you know. It just feels like a really nice conversation, you know. Cole, 